Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll have a look at this recent paper where they developed and tested a new method of measuring NAD in the blood and used it to study NAD levels in humans in real world cases, in different age groups, across genders, at different times of the day, and how they are impacted by NMN supplementation and exercise, both separately and in combination. NAD levels go down with age and modulating them is emerging as a potential intervention for diseases of aging. However, the natural NAD levels and their response to interventions differs between people. And there is no easy and quick way to measure the NAD levels out of the lab at the moment. This makes it difficult to personalize therapies and take into account those that do not respond to NAD supplementation. The team developed a low-cost, automated and rapid NAD analyzer, which requires only five microliters of blood and uses bioluminescence and an optical reader. This allows more frequent and local readings to be taken. They used the device to look at some measurements. They saw that aerobic sport and NMN supplementation increased NAD levels, that males had higher NAD than females before the age 50, and that NAD levels were quite stable over time. First, let's look at the method they use to identify NAD. It's probably not necessary to know how the device works, but I think it is really cool, so I've included a quick overview. They created a sensor protein that they called NS-GOGI 1.3. The protein was grown by adding the necessary genes to E. coli, which apparently enables cheaper manufacturing. The protein has two elements, NLOC and RFP, when they are close together, the RFP will emit a red light using bioluminescence resonance energy transfer. Normally, the NLOC and RFP are too far apart to produce any radiance, but the protein changes shape when combined with an NAD molecule, which brings them together, and the light is emitted and can be detected by an optical reader. Normal way of measuring NAD is to use liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, or LCMS which requires a large and expensive piece of lab equipment. The team compared the results from the assay with that of the LCMS and found that they matched well. The Pearson's correlation was 0 0.992, where a value of one indicates an exact match. The first test they did was to administer NMN orally, either 500 milligrams or 1,000 milligrams daily. The only instructions on this that I can find was that it was between 9 and 10 a.m. in the morning. In the first study, there was no exercise and the study lasted 30 days. There were 75 participants, both male and female, aged between 55 and 70, and they were split into three groups, placebo, 500 milligrams, and 1,000 milligrams. The NMN raised the NAD in the blood in a dose-dependent manner, from 23.8 micromoles in the placebo group to 41.7 in the 500 milligram and 58.8 in the 1000 milligram group. The NAD levels in the treatment groups showed much wider spread than in the placebo, pointing to some participants being non-responders. They did investigate this and found a higher expression of NAD consuming proteins such as PARPs and CD38. So possibly they were absorbing the NMN but breaking it down more quickly. The team also saw an increase in methylated nicotinamide showing possibly an excess of nicotinamide. They also looked at NMN with exercise. The exercises were aerobic for 40 to 60 minutes, three times a week, with an increase in intensity after two weeks. The paper refers to aerobic exercise, but the methods section also mentions resistance training three times a week with no further detail. There were 42 participants in a placebo and 500 milligram group. At the end of the study, the placebo group had NAD levels of 33.1 micromoles and the 500 milligram group at 55.48. This is in comparison to 23.8 and 41.7 respectively for the same groups in the no exercise study. So taking NMN raised NAD in addition to the level gained through exercise. Using the test, they checked the NAD levels of a group of individuals of different ages and sexes. The groups were subdivided into those less than 50 and those over 50. 
they saw that in the less than 50 cohort, the females had lower NAD at 27.2 micromolar against the males having 32.5. However, after 50, the levels dropped faster in the males until there was no significant difference between the two sexes. There were a couple of other interesting observations that they made by taking advantage of the ease of measurement with the new device. They took the NAD level of seven participants at 3 a.m. and 10 a.m. There was a small increase at 10 a.m., but it was not significant. They also looked at the NAD dynamics after giving the participants 300 milligrams of NMN. The NAD levels raised after 60 minutes, but then dropped back to baseline by 120 minutes. They also looked at NAD levels over the midterm by taking them twice a week for 100 days for six participants. During this time, the NAD levels were quite consistent except for one participant who started taking NMN. They didn't mention which participant this was, but from the numbers and graphs, it looks like subject three, where there is a sudden jump at day 70. One subject exercised more than the others for 11 of the 25 days on which NAD was measured. And they reported that he also saw an increase in NAD on the days that he exercised. This looks like subject five, whose NAD levels are consistently higher than others in the group. Others who exercise less often did not see this bump. Some of the results reported in this study were from very small groups, so I see them as interesting data points for which it would be great to see further study. Perhaps the key thing was the NAD detection system itself. It would be great to see an at-home testing kit based on this technology. It seems to get around one of the key problems with NAD testing, which is the molecule's instability and would potentially be much cheaper than the current mail-in tests. It's interesting that NAD levels did not seem to fluctuate much during the day and the nicotinamide methylation increased, but good to see positive effects of exercise and NMN supplementation on the NAD levels and that they appeared to be additive. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon. Thank you.